Hey guys, it's Sherry Vegas here and we are back with another resin tutorial. This time we are going for like a moody sort of dark blooms inspired resin tabletop. I finally made my way to Ikea to go and get this. Um, so you can't really tell what it is actually because it's in the box, but this is that table that has been going, that side table, um, the metal one that's been going around that everyone's been doing like little viral sort of artsy craftsy table makeover hacks. Um, and I am finally going to do my version on that. So we're going to be doing like obviously of course resin and flowers and we're going to be doing like a dark sort of moody, bloomy, inspired piece. The last time I made a resin um, resin floral tabletop, um, I did it really like pinks and roses and really like light and bright. And I also poured it upside down. This time we're gonna be pouring it face up. So we're gonna be doing a few different techniques in this video. And we're gonna be like kind of making it a little bit more, I guess, luxury looking, I guess, if that's the best way to describe it. I'm not really sure how to describe the idea that I have in my head. Um, but anyway, stay tuned and I'm going to show you exactly how you can make this. Okay guys, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to prep our flowers before we put them into resin. So if you want to use fresh flowers, we need to dry them beforehand because we can't put any items that contain moisture into resin because eventually over time that moisture gets trapped in the resin and then that item will start to rot. So we just need to dry out all of our flowers. You can also buy flowers that are already dried um, if you don't want to do this step. But I received this really pretty bunch of these flowers I have no clue what they're called but I really like them I thought they were a really cool shape and I knew that they were going to dry well because they're really bright colored and that the shape will hold so what I'm doing now is just placing this into some silica gel now if you want like a really in-depth guide on how to dry flowers I'll add it up below up above I have a flower drying preservation um, I've got a few videos on that on multiple different ways to do it that are a lot more in depth but basically what I'm doing is I've got a plastic container and I'm placing my silica gel in there you can see that all of my silica gel all the balls are orange which for my brand means that this silica gel is dry and it's ready to take the moisture then I just pop a lid on and that way the silica gel can suck out all of the moisture from the flowers dry them out and preserving them now it's been about a week and a half from when I first put them in and they were nice and dry by this time the thicker the flower generally the longer it takes to dry out and that can also change depending on where you are in the world so if you're in a really hot climate they might dry out a lot faster um, than if you were in a different climate so once they're all dry, I then just dump them out onto my baking tray and then just give them a tap to remove the silica gel. The silica gel should just fall off them if they're nice and dry. If they still have quite a lot of moisture, you'll find that the silica gel will cling to them. And you can also see um, that my silica gel beads are gone to that green color which means that they've soaked up all the moisture that they can um, and it's time to change them over or dry them out so i'm just giving them a nice light tap before i can place them in now the rest of my flowers i already had dried out for this piece so i didn't need to do anything for those now whatever pieces you're going to be used you just need to make sure that it will actually fit into that ridge of the tray if you do want to use any larger flowers, you'll probably need to cut them down to size so that way they will fit into that lip of the tray. If they stick out too much, you're going to have them poking out of the resin. So with this big piece, I am just cutting it straight down the middle and cutting all of that back off to make it fit into my tray. Um, no one's going to see the back, so no one's going to actually see that I have cut off the entire back piece to that flower, but it just means that it's going to sit nice and flat in my tray and not stick out. And then I'm just doing my arrangement, I'm placing flowers in and seeing kind of how I would like it. Once I do get like happy with kind of how it's looking, I'm just going to take a photo so that way I can reference that back 
back because I do need to take all of those out so I can clean the tray properly and then do my first layer of resin. So I've just done it to kind of work out my design. So I'm not trying to work my design out while I'm placing them in the resin. So just I've got like that rough idea. So I'm just putting these all to one side. I've got my photo so I can reference it back. And then I just need to give my tray a really good clean out just because you can see how dirty it got just by placing all the flowers in and kind of working out my arrangement. I need to get rid of all of that before I put my resin in. Otherwise that's going to cast into my resin. So today I'm using the Crystal Cast Resin from Make Art Resin. But you can use what any, any kind of epoxy casting resin that you have on hand or that you like. I like the Crystal Cast Resin for flowers because it is really crystal clear and also it doesn't get that many bubbles because it's a really fluid viscosity resin. So it has a lot less bubbles than say a medium viscosity resin. So I just give that a really good mix up. Make sure that A and B have combined thoroughly before I start to pour it into my tray. Now, because I want this to have a little tinge of black the whole way through, I am using some shimmer mica powder. This is a black one and I've just put a tiny amount in. I'm gonna be pouring in layers, so I don't wanna to go too um, heavy with my black and cover most of my flowers. I want my flowers to be able to be seen through it and kind of look like they're like floating through the sort of um, like blackness I guess like floating through like a milk bath but it's black instead of white so I'm just going to pour that all out onto the bottom of my tray now these trays are actually quite big and it will take you quite a few pours so this will take quite a lot of resin to actually fill this tray up fully so my first pour was 300 mils of resin and that's just going to be my base layer that I'm going to attach all my flowers to and I just also use my heat gun to pop any little air bubbles that I might have mixed in to my resin I've left my casting resin to sit for a little bit before I started placing my flowers because this is a really fluid casting resin. You might find that your flowers will float around if you work with it too soon. So I like to wait for it to get a little bit tacky before I start placing them in. So that way, wherever I do put them, they're not going to move from that place. If I work with it as soon as I've mixed up my resin, I do find I get a little bit of like the flowers will shift slightly just because the resin's a bit too fluid so I've waited about an hour before I have started to place all my flowers in and work on my design Once my first layer had set, I then started to do my second layer. I've added that same black shimmer powder and I'm just tinting the resin. I don't want it to be too strong and overpower it and end up hiding most of my flowers. I still want to be able to see them coming up through. So you can also use a black tint or a black pigment paste. Just be a bit sparing if you are using a black pigment paste because they're generally quite strong. And I've just mixed up another 300 mils and doing my second layer. And after that layer had set, guess what? I am pouring another layer. There are gonna be quite a few layers in this piece. And the reason why I don't just do like one or two deep layers is because I'm working with flowers and resin can get quite hot the deeper you pour it. So sometimes if you pour your resin too deep, because it heats up so much, it can end up discoloring the flowers or cooking your flowers. So that's why I'm doing lots of multi, like multi layers to this piece, just so that way I don't accidentally damage those flowers in the process of doing a deep pour and keep my colors quite true to how they are. I'm also doing it because I want to add more and more flowers as I build up the layers. So I've got depth to this piece.
Now for some reason on this IKEA tabletop tray there is a random hole in it so just to cover that up I'm just going to be using a little bit of tape and then placing that over the hole so that way when I do my next resin pour I'm not going to have resin just leaking out. Originally I thought that hole might be where you place a screw in to attach it to the frame but it has literally no purpose. It's just there for some reason. So I'm just using a bit of tape to cover that. So that way when I do my next layer, I'm not gonna have resin just pouring out. Now this layer I'm going to do completely clear. I've not added any color into this layer just because I'm happy with the amount of black I've got and I want to have some of it clear so I can see some of the flowers poking up through and not have it completely covered in black where I don't really see all of the flowers. I've decided to top coat my piece for two reasons. One, because I do have a few petals just sticking out above my last layer of resin. So by doing a top coat, they're gonna be hidden into that next layer of resin and I'm gonna get a nice, even, smooth surface. And the second reason is your top coat resins are always designed to be really tough. And because this is going to be used as a side table, I do want it to be really tough to be able to take hot cups of coffee and stuff like that on top of it. So those are the two reasons reasons why I am top coating this piece. I've just taped around the edge so that way when the resin does pour over the edge it's not going to go on my tray and I've just used painters tape and done two layers to that. Then I've used a little bit of light sandpaper and I'm just giving the whole surface a really light sanding back. This is just going to help that top coat grip really well onto this piece. And then I'm just giving it a clean with some alcohol and some paper towel just to get rid of any of the little bits of dust that I've gotten onto the piece when I did give it a sand. And then I just pour my last layer of resin which is my top coat and this is again completely clear. If you are finding it a little bit hard to remove that tape over the side because the resin has dripped over it, just use a heat gun or a hairdryer, warm that tape up, warm the resin up, and you'll find that it will just peel straight off. It's a really handy tip to get a really nice clean line. Here is the finished piece. It looks even better in person. My camera had a really hard time trying to focus on it because the black resin is just too shiny. Thank you guys so much for watching this tutorial. If you found you got benefit from it, please give it a big thumbs up. It really helps my channel out and lets YouTube know to show this video to more resin art enthusiasts. If you are new to my channel, please do subscribe as I post new videos every single week and I specialize in resin, jessamite, candle making and alcohol inks. If you have any questions, as always, feel free to leave them in the box below. I really enjoyed making this and it's definitely going to be my new side table next to my couch. Um, I think it's a perfect addition to my lounge room. But I'm always grateful to hear your thoughts and thank you guys so much for watching.